Hello and welcome to this Invest Midlands session sponsored by the Midlands Engine Investment Fund entitled Funding the Next Wave of Entrepreneurs and Disruptors. I'm Ben Ormsby and I'm one of the editors at thebusinessdesk.com. So despite the disruption caused by the pandemic over the last 12 months, the uncertainties that it has generated have also sparked plenty of opportunities for both startups and SMEs across the Midlands to help fuel the economic recovery. So during this session, I'm delighted to be joined by an expert panel, all of whom are on screen, thankfully, so no tech issues here so far, um, who will share how the region can ensure we grow these businesses, uh, but also how they, the businesses can get access to the funding they require to fulfill their potential and ultimately deliver what we all want, the economic growth for the Midlands. We will, I'd just like to do a quick bit of housekeeping. There is a Q&A function on the right-hand side of your screen Please, if you want to ask any questions, do so in there, and we will endeavour to answer them throughout uh, the session. Uh, and now I'm going to move on to, well, asking each of the panellists to introduce themselves. So starting with Sarah, if that's okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, I'm Sarah Windrum. I run a tech company, which I started back in 2009. So I don't like to call myself an entrepreneur, but I guess I do fit into that, into that category. And uh, I'm also now chair of the Coventry and Warwickshire Local Enterprise Partnership. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mark Ailes. I'm chair of Oxygen Enterprise Partners, uh, a family fund that invests across a number of different sectors, largely centered around early stage tech and uh, health and social care. Uh, in our health and, um, sorry, in our tech uh, arena, we invest in the service, gaming, uh, fintech, the whole spectrum. We currently have a portfolio of about 70 investments that we've made over the last five years. Fantastic. Uh, Paul? Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Paul Smith, and I'm the area director for Lloyds Bank in Leicester. Um, I've been working with SMEs from the banking side um, for over 25 years, and we're delighted to be here today because clearly we recognise as a, as a group the part we've got to play in helping Britain recover and also our startups that are much needed than the kind of future lifeblood of the UK economy. So really pleased to be here today. Thank you. And last but not least, Ken. Yes, Ken. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ken Cooper. I'm managing directions at the British Business Bank. I think for about the last 19 years now, I've been involved in, in setting up um, mostly venture capital funds to invest in early stage SMEs. Um, but, but more importantly for, for this meeting, um, I helped establish the Midlands Engine in Investment Fund. Fantastic. So let's pick up on that first sort of point that I mentioned of disruption creating opportunities. Are we all see, are we seeing lots of signs of entrepreneurs having you know, shifted strategies or started new ventures coming back off, uh, you know, coming off the back of the last 12 months? Uh, has anyone got any specifics they want to share? Yeah, if, if it's all right, I'd love yeah. to kick off, kick off with that. I mean, I think what's, what we've seen that's been really interesting is both the kind of startups. Um, so I was, do, I was doing some stat checking um, before in preparation for today because I knew we had a kind of record number of startups, but wasn't quite sure how many. Um, and in terms of tech, which obviously is my, is my bag, um, uh, in quarter four of last year, um, we had an increase of tech startups by 48% in the West Midlands and 36% in the East Midlands, so well above the, the national average, which was a 16% rise. So quite interesting, I think, that the pandemic has fueled um, technology and digital solutions and startups in, in that space. Um, but what we've also seen is innovation within existing firms. So I just wanted to give a, a flag to um, a company that, that we've got in, in Warwickshire, a company called Context, um, very successful automotive design engineering business, pivoted to medical and, and medical devices, registered patents in, in, in that space now and um, you know, experiencing growth as, as a result. So yeah, I think the pandemic's been very interesting in that, in that sense, um, both startups, but also innovation within existing businesses. Definitely second that. Um, I know from our portfolio, we, we've had a number of cases where uh, the pandemic has forced existing strong businesses to re-examine what they do and how they do it and to really focus on how they can leverage tech in particular to refine and improve what are historical processes. 
and some of those have just been focused internally some of those businesses have in fact created brand new products that are then becoming spin-offs into new ventures so i, I definitely concur it's it really has uh, focus people's minds on on looking at different ways to work, and and that's that's very much um, fostered this innovation that we're seeing coming through now. And and Ben, just to kind of add to that, from a kind of a banking perspective, we're seeing exactly the same. You know, we're seeing you know Midlands entrepreneurs really grasping and looking at the opportunities that are ahead, and and, and going into those kind of tech areas. And we're certainly seeing a good uplift of, of new businesses coming on board. New exciting businesses, um, I dare say, looking at you know how they can you know adapt to that kind of modern way of working, but also within our existing client base, and we're seeing quite a lot of our clients diversify and be really agile and nimble and quite creative in in grasping some of the opportunities that, as as, as tragic as the pandemic has been, has also created a number of opportunities for our clients to kind of thrive really. So we are seeing you know exactly what Sarah and Mark have seen. Um, with our kind of many many clients that we look after. Yeah, I, th I think I can only only agree with that as well, Ben. And I, I, I sort of, you know, we have a lot of investments across a lot of funds, uh, and we saw when the first lockdown happened, and and there was a, that that great sort of feeling of of no one knowing what was happening. We saw values drop everywhere, and then you know, the great thing about investing in SMEs and, and particularly tech SMEs is you're back in those entrepreneurs who have. Who have started to pivot, who have who have reacted quickly, and um, we're 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 seeing things actually you know back up where they were. Now that's not universal. Not every company has been able to pivot, and well, but but across the board, I I think we're seeing we're seeing some really positive signs now. Which that, that, that's great. That's that's always great to hear. And actually, it's it's nice to be able to talk about a positive coming out of the pandemic in a sense, and you know, not not sort of downplaying all, all the hardship that's come out as well. I guess the challenge, the next challenge is, if these businesses are spinning out or starting up, is how we encourage that growth within the Midlands because you know there will be other businesses that won't be successful and so there will be gaps within markets. So perhaps a straight one to you, you Ken, first off and then everyone else joining. You know, what, what is the current appetite for funders for initial funding and follow on and, and do you see some gaps? I, I, I mentioned in my intro that I've been doing this for about 19 years. There, there are always gaps. There are always some gaps. But, but, but what we've got in, in the Midlands is the Midlands Engine Investment Fund. And, and that's a nice spread of funding from, from that very sort of small loan startup. Um, obviously, the bank has startup loans and they're, they're worth anyone looking at, you know, through to much larger equity checks. And, we did see as as we always see when there's a bit of an economic shock we see fund managers looking to protect their portfolio um i guess the the guys in in banking are seeing the same thing um but but we've i think we've moved past that now and, and we're definitely seeing that, that our funds are out there looking for new opportunities and 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 eager you know this is historically the best time to invest is when you've had a bit of a shock and you're coming out of it um and and i think yeah, you know, people are getting getting into that. I think uh, it's probably a, a as good a time to get investment as ever. Sarah, I could see you nodding in, in the background to everything Ken was saying. Uh, how how are you seeing? Yeah, yeah, no, I think I mean I think the Midlands Engine Investment Fund, it, you know, was was a, a brilliant concept. Um, was it 2018? I certainly was on the board of the local enterprise partnership when, when we when we approved it, and um, really to address those gaps. And as Ken said, there's there's always gaps. Um, I still think there's more we can do though. And I think what's interesting is there was um, a recent um, Bewhurst report that kind of described the Midlands as being undercapitalized. So essentially, we're home to um, you can tell I love a stat. We're home to 11% of the UK's high growth businesses, but we only got 5% of, of the um, UK's uh, proportion of the, uh, sorry, the, of, of the UK's 13.5 billion invested privately. So I think there's more we can do. And I think actually, just as Ken said with the Midlands Engine Investment Fund, there is a real role for the regional economic development structures that we've got. So the Midlands Engine, 
obviously below that the local enterprise partnerships as well and then the local authorities there's a real role we can play to to showcase the midlands as this really attractive place for investment um and and you know also to to support investors as well to to um uh, you know to, to come here and to and to spend to, to invest their money here um, and to help those businesses grow and um, yeah i think that that partnership working across the midlands is crucial at this particular time to capitalize on what ken's talking about and i guess mark you know you said you 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 invest heavily in sort of that tech in the tech sector and, and in those sort of initials startups and smes you know are, are you seeing more people coming or looking for funding at the minute or? I am, and and, and uh, we're quite unusual because because we're a family fund. Effectively, we we invest. Um, we don't necessarily have the same regimented structures that a lot of funds, traditional funds, would have. And the advice I always give to um, younger startups that I'm working with is is know your audience. So when you're looking to raise funding, it's really important that you do your homework and you understand the restrictions that are applied to individual funds. That could be geographical. It could be sector, it could be size of check, it could be whether or not they have experience of that space or not. Um, and all too often, unfortunately, I see uh, startups scattergun approach, you know, blasting emails through LinkedIn to every single fund that they can think of. And it's in most cases, it's just not relevant to spend the time at the early stage understanding your own business and how that might fit into somebody's portfolio. Is, is a key step that a lot of people fall down on, I think. So you know, do the homework, find out about the funds that you want to approach, find out whether or not they even operate in your space or whether there's any uh, restrictions on them investing in your space, find out what size of check they can write. So again, a typical example would be that if, if a startup is looking to raise a, a pre-seed 50,000 pounds, let's say, there's no point going and talking to LDC, who will typically only write a check out for five million pound plus. So it, it, it really is important that um, not just startups, but any business that's seeking funding does the homework first to find out who are the right people to approach and what restrictions and what will they require in return. I, th I think that's, that's great advice, Mark. But I, I, I would also say that, that um, it's important that people don't, don't filter themselves out, if you like. You know, don't don't look and think it's it's too difficult because because certainly you know one of the things that we like to encourage all our fund managers to do is is to take that call and to and to give the advice. And I think you know if you if you get that advice, try try to try not to react badly to it, but to listen to what they're saying and go on. But but I mean it's, it is great advice because there are, there are so many options out there and not all of them are right. But but against that, don't don't sort of just think it's all too difficult or there's no one for you just just to have a go i suppose paul, paul i could see you nodding yeah and, and i think from a banking perspective that that I, we totally recognize that we've got a part to play you know but i think that, that your bank can offer you a couple of things you know first of all there is a wealth of information and support upon our website and i'm sure that's the same for the other banks as well you know we provide a free entrepreneur's guide that, that's called yes business can and I would really recommend that to any you know, startup ent entrepreneur who's looking to take their first steps in business. We've got a Lloyds Bank Academy where we um, we sort of profile and, and, and provide additional online support for our businesses. And then also there's a real good guide on there in terms of we've got five steps to setting up a successful startup in terms of the planning, research, money, building your network and, and getting online. So I think there's a wealth of information there ultimately that's going to help a, an entrepreneur get themselves in the right place to then present their case for, for business funding now with it with, with a bank that you know um you know the, the other side of the coin is it's it, it's it's a riskier start part of a business's life cycle we're aware from very, very many stats that a number of businesses aren't successful within a within a given period so you know there is an appetite for banks to support startups but for me that has to be done on a very well presented basis taking account of the information that I've just referred to so that you're having a discussion with your bank, with a good business plan, with a credible forecast, and you can talk about your plans together. So I think I would really encourage any entrepreneur to absolutely engage with their bank, but to do it twofold, both in terms of the information and vast amount of support that's available through the websites, but also then getting involved and speaking to somebody on a one-to-one -one basis 
to discuss those fund funding options, but you know, making sure that you get the right type of funding for your business in the right way, because clearly the, 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 there are many aspects of finance that, that is available to, to, to SMEs, but it's making sure that you've got it right, both for now and directionally the future in which, work you, which you want to take your business. Well, can I just, sorry, sorry, can I just chip in on that? Just because um, I, previous to becoming chair of the Coventry and Warwickshire uh, LEP board, I chaired the digital and creative business group there. Um, and what's very interesting is that creative industries don't seem to get a lot of, of, of traction with um, with investment in, in, in the Midlands. And I think it was interesting, I, I, did, I did do some research into the Midlands Engine Investment Fund and kind of as you would expect, manufacturing, health, you know, they're, they're, they're top of the list. But I know from the West Midlands Creative Scale-Up Programme, for example, there were a few businesses there who were told, yes, you're not, but you're not quite ready yet. So I do think there needs to be some, some support in that readiness and, and potentially, as you've said, Mark, you know, being able to find the kind of right fund. And obviously the banks are playing a really important role in that. But I think as, um, you know, as I said, as the, the regional economic development structures have got, have got a role there too. Um, because they're, they're, you know, they're, there is some um, support that's needed, particularly, I think, for some of the creative industries, both the businesses to be ready, but also perhaps the investors to be able to, to, to understand the risk a bit more and to, and to um, kind of understand the sector a little bit more. Yeah. That, that ties in nicely, partly to a question, which I think, I don't know if Paul read it before we started telling us everything, but you managed to nearly answer it which was, um, no, no, no complaint from me. Yeah. Most startups and disruptors are solo, solopreneurs and maybe working for someone else uh, when they're doing that. What support would the panel have for these perspective areas? You outlined quite a lot there from Lloyds. I guess my other question to that is, what, where, where is, you've re referenced the gap for creative industries. How do you think we can look to rectify that? And does anyone on the panel have an idea of how we start to move that, move that dial so that the Midlands can grow those areas? So I've got a few ideas, <laughs> um, try, trying to kind of see how best to put them into, into practice. Um, I think looking at kind of real accelerators, so a lot of things are called accelerators, but looking at kind of a real accelerator um, and how we, um, as I say, collaborate across the Midlands to kind of help to de-risk some of that early investment. I mean, I can give you a great example. We've got a university spin out who's got um, patents in neural networks. So essentially using neural networks to create um, kind of 3D digital uh, images that can be used in immersive games experiences. Now that sounds really exciting. Um, it also sounds quite high risk. Um, so I think that they're, they're sort of struggling at the moment to get, to get traction with, um, with equity investment as a result. So they kind of, they need it now. Um, but actually, the, the 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 product, I guess, maybe isn't quite as ready from a from a investor point of view as they would like to see it. So, how can we, as the Midlands, uh, work together to go? Okay, let's take something like that. Let's help to 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 kind of accelerate it. Um, but you know, as a as a kind of private public uh, partnership model, so that the the private investors see that that the um, that, you know that the region is kind of backing this this kind of um, creative technology um, but yeah at the same time obviously we're, we're also kind of leveraging private sector investment into that as well uh, yeah I do I do think we have a really strong strong role to play together yeah I, I, I'd agree um, so in a former life uh, I actually ran an accelerator for five years in Birmingham and we we uh, incubated and accelerated about 60 companies uh, over a five-year period and that consisted of a 13-week boot camp, so to speak, where they would come and reside at Bedman Science Park. And we would work with them with a team. At the time, we had around 250 business mentors that gave up their time freely uh, to work with those startups. And we worked with people like Finance Birmingham and Midven and local local funds to help those businesses raise that first seed seed fund. And it would typically be very small chunks of money, sort of 20,000, 30,000 pounds just to get them through that that those crucial steps to become investment ready to go and talk to more mature funds in, in many cases but i think um there's definitely a role for public sector to become more involved with the business sector to support those very early stage businesses yeah i mean i i, th I think that's important too and and we we are seeing actually in some of our other funds 
Um, so we've, we've backed a, a couple of accelerators to our enterprise capital fund program. And, and one of the things that they also do is, is you know, we're very focused at the moment on, on sort of increasing diversity and in, improving funding to underrepresented groups. And, and actually those accelerators are another way of helping there because you're, you're talking about a population that perhaps don't have the, the background in, in, in building businesses, but still have great ideas and, and can still contribute a lot. So I think, I think yeah, the time is, is definitely coming for, for more, more sort of accelerator type activity. Mm. Which then, I guess I'm going to take it on to a sort of another question of how can, how can Midlands entrepreneurs make themselves more attractive to funders is, is one thing, because I know, so I, I talk to businesses up and down the country and sometimes you'll have that conversation of, oh, well, we're based up north, therefore the people in London aren't interested in us or whatever. And Ken, obviously, the Midlands Engineering Investment Fund sort of takes away some of that because you can come in and do that. Same with you, you Mark. But how, how do those entrepreneurs make, you know, add to their attractiveness to make them sort of, to have those successful funding rounds that we hear about? Yeah, I, think it, oh, yeah. I think it goes back. Sorry, Ken, go on. Um, I, Mark, I, I was just going to say that, that, that sort of, you know, we're seeing that technology is making those distances a lot, a lot shorter. Um, and and I, the other thing I'd, I'd say is, is, is not to be frightened and authenticity. I, I, it's easy for, for businesses to perhaps spend a lot of money to have somebody else polish their idea. Um, and, and that kind of doesn't work. Um, I think there's, there's, there's authenticity. Well, we definitely, and I've mentioned it before, what we definitely encourage all of our fund managers to do is give honest feedback. Actually, honest feedback isn't as easy as it sounds because because you're, you're often looking at someone who's who's invested a lot into an idea, but it's not quite right. But, but you know, that that's what we, we sort of have to do. Sorry, Mark, I, I did interrupt you. I, I, I was just going to go back to my, my initial point, really, about how to go about obtaining funding. And, and it, it, you know, the scattergun approach, in my opinion, really just does not work. So if you want to build a relationship with a local investor, do your homework, find out about that investor, whether it's a fund or a private individual, an angel, uh, a specialist loan uh, instrument provider, do your homework about that local uh, funding option and tailor your approach to them so, so that you, you, you're ticking their boxes. Um, I, I can't stress that, that enough. You know, the, the amount of just spam emails that I, that I get, most of which I just don't have the time to read. Whereas if somebody takes the time to understand us, understand what we do, how we do it, what we've done in the past, um, actually they'll get a much better response from us. And, and whilst acknowledging Ken's point about, you know, don't rule yourself out from talking to people, just by taking the time to understand that fund, you will get a much better response. And I would add to what's been said um, by Sarah, Mark and Ken in terms of use the information support I referred to, because there's stacks and stacks of stuff there that will help people and entrepreneurs pr present a really credible case in terms of what they're up to and what they require. If I was then to say that specifically to a bank, is I would, you know, show your commitment to us. I mean, what's your investment into the project and, and what you're looking to do? How committed are you? And where we can have a good discussion based upon, you know, a, a risk-based approach in terms of what's the client, an entrepreneur putting into there and what support are they asking from a bank? I think you can get to a good compromise and a good solution, which hopefully will give the entrepreneur the cash to, to get off the ground and, and, and to start going. So I'd say really use the information that's out there, but specifically to a bank, you know, consider what your input into your, your, your new venture is as well. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that. Just a couple of points I'd, I'd, I'd suggest to um, any Midlands entrepreneur is to go to your local growth hub. Um, they will be connected in terms of um, grants that may still be available. There's still some ERDF funding. Um, obviously, Innovate UK have regional funds available so you know there might be an opportunity for proof of concept grant funding that that you know if you if you if you get that you've then got something to to kind of um launch from when you're going for perhaps the private investment and the bigger chunks of of, um, of money but i think also show how you can scale um I, I think that you know it's it's key to kind of understand what it is that you're that you're offering and i think coming back to mark's point about knowing your fund 
you know, an investor is going to want to see the, the, the kind of scale of the opportunity. I think you've got to be realistic about, about that as well. You know, we've all seen the Dragon's Dens where they go in with, um, you know, with ridiculous sales figures. You know, but, but I think recognising where your, where your opportunity to scale is, 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 is really important. Um, and I think, again, that comes back to what I was saying about the Midlands. I think, actually, we've got a real opportunity to help those, those, those um, businesses that have got great ideas. Uh, to provide them with that that opportunity to scale so yeah i would absolutely say link in with your with your growth hubs um, and and talk to them about about your um, your opportunities yeah perfect so i'm going to ask a very quick last question um, and it's it's a, a simple one of where do you think the exciting opportunities and the disruption is going to come from within the midlands you know you've all sort of said that you've seen the innovation coming out you know, I'm not going to hold you to it. It is getting written up, so it, it will be available online forever and ever, but I'm sure you won't be held accountable, I promise. Um, you know, where do you think those big, those big things that can fuel the Midlands economic growth are going to be? And I'll start with Mark, if that's okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, uh, um, d definitely tech-related. Uh, you know, tech is, is changing the way that we do everything in our lives. Um, the, the device that we carry in our pocket, the, the laptop that we log on to every day, um, it does more and more for us. And the people that can, can identify real problems and then come up with solutions uh, are the ones that are going to succeed. Um, we're all using Hopping today. Um, and we were talking earlier about the fantastic success that that's been in a relatively short period of time. Um, but it solves a problem. And I think that's, that's uh, yeah, tech, definitely, and, and medicine in the West Midlands. Uh, you know, we have such an amazing uh, group of universities around the West Midlands um, that have huge uh, research departments that we should really be looking to see what's going to come out of those uh, universities and what's the future for uh, biomedicine and, and so on. So those will be my areas, tech, tech and uh, medicine. Perfect. Paul? Um, I'll go a bit more traditional. Um, tech and, and that, absolutely, there's opportunities there. But I'm really excited about what I see happening in manufacturing. You know, we work closely with an MTC in, in Coventry, and I see some fantastic young apprentices go and use that site. It's an amazing place, and I think the future of manufacturing in the Midlands is really exciting. Uh, and the apprentices that we've got coming through, and the next generation, as manufacturing adapts to the kind of new mo the modern world and, and the different world that we're all going to be living in. So I think, I think there's a bright future for manufacturing in the UK. I think we've got some great skilled people. Perfect. And Sarah? Uh, so completely agree on that front, actually, Paul. And my very first day as chair, I went to the MTC. Um, yeah. But I was actually particularly excited by construction um, and right. the work they're doing in terms of um, retrofit for, for, you know, for obviously for, um, for on the, on the um, net zero agenda, but also recycled materials. So yeah, I think construction for me is particularly exciting. Um, and also what they're now calling, this came from GCMS, um, Createch. So, you know, we've had FinTech, we've had MedTech, now we've got Createch. But I think, um, you know, that, that we're, we're talking now about hopping, but actually, could we have an immersive virtual conference? You know, what is the evolution of these experiences? And I think that's where, I, the, you know, the, the Midlands, the, the, the creative industries we've got here, the games technology expertise we've got here, I think that could be really exciting. I can't speak for any of the other panelists, but I don't think anyone wants to see a VR version of me. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then lastly, Ken. Yeah, so, well, I, I mean, I think, you know, yes, it's it's going to be tech, about, about I mean, all, the, all this call in the future, people tend to call it way too early. And, and when I was growing up, it was all going to be about more leisure time, better health care um, and, and better entertainment. And I, I think actually that, that's where we're going. We've, we've got an aging population, tech and health care. The, the overlap between those two things is fantastic. There's going to be manufacturing in there. And, and let's not forget net zero because we're all now discovering that we want a, a better place to live in. Um, and again, tech, you know, if tech doesn't help us there, nothing will. So, so I, I just think it's those long-term trends that we've heard of where the time is, is probably upon us. Perfect. Thank you very much. And that is all we've got time for. So thank you for joining us. Thank you to my panellists uh, for giving up their time. And thank you to our sponsor, the Midlands Engine Investment Fund. 
If you haven't already visited them, uh, can I point you in the direction of the networking area and the expo, uh, where you can meet some of the other delegates here today. The next session will be starting at 12.40, so in five minutes, and we'll be looking at the investment in transport infrastructure and how that's key to accelerating the region's economic growth, which I think we've all established is going to be around tech and future economies. So uh, thank you very much and do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.